250 million quid on Ajax old boys. Man United honestly have given Eric Ten Hag all that he ever asked for and there will be no excuses. Welcome to the United Old Sport. My name is Webb. Just after the confirmation of those two boys, shirt number three, Nusail New Mazrawi and shirt number four, Mathis Delete. What exactly is the boss planning to do? And of course, it is now over... 200 million pounds spent on former Ajax footballers. No wonder when we did confirm the signing of the two uh, most recent ones in Mathis Delit and Nusal Mazrawi, Ajax were quickly uh, inspired to go on their ex and uh, cheekily send a message saying Manchester is red. Of course, to try and put themselves in the picture, which they are indeed part of because they did make Andre Onana Alessandro Martinez, Nusal Mazraoui, Ajax, uh, the, the boss himself, Eric Ten Hag, Mathis Delit, and Antonio Dos Santos. Now, how exactly is Eric Ten Hag going to then uh, field these players and get the best out of them? Because obviously, you do not uh, get all that money as a manager to sign players from your country, uh, from uh, your former clubs, only to keep them on the bench. So certainly, there must be a plan to accommodate most of them for more times than not and that's why i'm here to open your eyes to the possibility of manchester united playing with a back three look at this so this is a uh, what i think could be a probable starting 11 in some games for manchester united of course with the depth we have right now you don't think at any one point uh, one team is going to play all the games it's not going to happen really but have you thought about how Eric Ten Hag we know wants to play uh, an expressive game, a proactive game where he attacks and attacks? That's why some of the games where we thought he lost it in the last season, he was all concentrated on trying to attack, which was not coming out. But in the middle, he left a lot of spaces and gaps because he was so fascinated with attacking. That's why he always wants to play with a single pivot. Now, with these players coming in and knowing that certainly, certainly all of them are going to be a crucial part of how he wants to play because the pressure for Eric Ten Hag is to improve the playing style of Man United and push it as close to how, uh, how, how he used to play uh, at Ajax as possible. Now, how about this backline of, of three central defenders? That is Delete in the middle, Licha on the left, and Nusal Mazraoui on the right. In the middle, you can replace Casemiro with Manuel Ugarte in case he's there. Let's, let's assume, let's be positive, guys. Let's assume we get Manuel Ugarte. I think his name would look better there. Don't you think so? You can let me know in the comments, but I think it looks cute there. Look at that. So I'm assuming, okay, we've signed Manuel Ugarte or even another number six, Sander Baj, whoever we bring in, or even if it's Sofia Nambra, but again, another former Eric Ten Hag player. Uh, but, but whichever number six we have comes in there as the schema. Have two blocking midfielders, Kobe on the left, Bruno on the right. Now, what, because remember, uh, usually Bruno should be playing as a 10 here. But in this uh, back three, you're creating room for, a, a, for more attack-minded players. So what then do you do? You're sacrificing Diogo Dalo, or a, a defender. Have three central defenders because their role is mostly to initiate the attack to play because Eric Ten Hag loves to, uh, to, 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 to defend high with the press. So you don't really need so many defenders if you're going to defend like that because in, inadvertently, even one of your defenders, even if you had four, is going to uh, end up becoming you know, part of the, uh, of the midfield. So uh, how about start with your back three, which you trust. Have Ugate as the patient as schema sitting in front of the back three. The two co co uh, uh, blocking midfielders on the left and on the right. Then... This uh, have your width because he loves his width, and uh, some of our best players are wide players in Ganacho and Ahmad Diallo. Then we have this hole be the free area where Joshua Zakzi can always drop in because he loves to get on the ball and do beautiful things with the ball. He can drop in with freedom. It can be if it's not Zakzi because Zakzi can drop in. Hoyland is always expected to remain up top, keeping the pressure. On the opposition defense so that they know there is a lethal man or a zap top so zakzi can drop in here into this hole play so it changes then into a three uh three five one one of sorts at uh, when you have the ball 
or uh, at times when you have the ball, or uh, this uh, hole can still be a hole for someone else to uh, to, to dive into. Uh, and uh, let's say Ahmad cutting into the middle because he loves to cut there. Or it can be Bruno coming into this hole in moments. It can be Kobe coming into this hole. So there is that freedom to go and exploit the hole. So this will give Man United a different transition from midfield to attack. And that is why Joshua Zakzi was brought. This is why I said, whereas Zakzi is seen as a backup striker for Hoyland, it's, ex it's very possible that we, are, we shall see games where Hoyland and Zakzi are both starting. But even Hoyland can cut, cut into this space because we've seen him on the ball. He has got good hold-up play. He can come into these spaces. He uses the ball well. He's so strong and win balls. Then when he does come into these spaces, then Zakzi can stay up top. So what this gives us is a mobile attack. And that is what Eric Ten Hag has always lacked. He wants a mobile attacking force. Even if we look at mobility with just these four up top, even if we just focus on the four up top here, they are mobile enough to put any defense under maximum pressure. That's exactly what Eric Ten Hag has always wanted but lacked in the Man United team. Because you look at all this, and this is mo mobility in every way you look at it. Ganacho can come, cut into the middle. Zaxi can cut in. Anyone, Hoyland can cut in. Ahmad can cut in. That's mobility. We have not even added Bruno, who can also come in here comfortably. We have not added Kobe, who can also come in here comfortably. So you see the reason why Manuel Ugate is the player that Eric Ten Hag and Ineos are, are, are very, very, very are focused on bringing in is because Ugate will not want to come in and add to this. Ugate is the discipline number six who will stay here and just do his part. In case we go into this attack, because this is a lethal attack, having all these players come at you, Kobe and, and Bruno, creative players who can use the ball, adding to this force here, are always going to keep any defend, uh, defenses at bay. They are midfielders at bay. So they are, they are, they are inadvertently uh, bringing true to life the old football adage that the best way to defend is to attack. Because if you're having these players all coming at you in the final third, really, you're not going to have time to attack. So Manuel Ugate here, staying disciplined and patient here, covering the yards of, uh, of ground, wide and, and uh, in white point because it doesn't have to come and, and drift into and, and contribute here because there's already Kobe and Bruno. So all he's got to do is run horizontally like this, cover this ground, okay? which we believe he can because his movements are then going to be limited wide, not uh, up front. So you, f you, you, you get a sense that this can easily give us an identity, make us lethal, and teams will respect us because one of the things we lacked as Man United in the last season, guys, is teams were not respecting us. Small teams would come at us comfortably. They would have the confidence to come at us. To uh, we, we head into a game against a a a, 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 a small team like Burnley or, uh, or, or or Luton, and they have the confidence to come at us to bring the game at us. Now. If you're Man United, you want to be able to command the respect of, 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 of uh, small clubs like this. And to do that, I think for me, if we played in this shape, I think Man United could be unplayable. And probably this is what uh, Eric Ten Hag could be contemplating. Now, this may not be the shape that plays all games. Now, there are games where you cannot play back three, especially based on the opponent. There are games where you will certainly have them to sacrifice one of the two strikers or one of the two wingers, so sacrifice uh, one of the two wingers and play a 4-4-2, four, four, for example. Okay. Bring, instead of having uh, one of the wingers say, Ahmad, I'm just giving an example, or, or Canacho, or one of the two strikers, or let's say a, a, a winger, bring in Diogo Dalo, add him on the defense, so sacrifice, uh, sacrifice Ahmad, for example, depending on the opponent in some games. Now, I'm showing you how we've got big depth in this squad so you bring Dalo in because you probably don't need a lot of width this is now in some games Mazrawi goes on the left then you play your midline of four so have your 442 direct 442 traditional 442 
or you can switch the 442 and make it a 442 diamond with Bruno playing in the 10 instead of having a flat uh, a, a flat shape like that you can have a diamond where you have got Ugate there have Kobe there uh, probably Ganacho might not be the player to be uh, in this shape he might be a sacrificed one or you then have maybe Zakzi here or maybe uh, you can have Zakzi here because Zakzi can with, with Bruno there Zakzi would be a better then so have Zakzi drop there yeah then have so instead of Ganacho maybe up top or uh, Ganacho stays up top with Hoyland or or Ahmad with Hoyland so you end up uh, ch changing the shape to a 442 diamond something like that so you can see that the squad that Eric Ten Hag has built gives him options. He can try out so many things depending on the opponent. All these are options. If it's not this, this is the diamond, the 442 diamond. So the diamond is in this middle. This is what makes it called a 442 diamond. So these are the four midfielders forming a diamond in the middle. And these are the two up top. Or it can be a 4231. If you've got Ugata in there playing with Kobe in the middle, Next to Kobe, this is the obvious lately. Guys, I'm showing you how this formation, this rather this squad gives us a lot of depth. So we have a 4-2, uh, then uh, Bruno, uh, then uh, someone wide. Probably here you could sacrifice Zach Z if you play 4 3 3 one have your Ahmad back in here. Yeah. So you see all the options that Eric Ten Hag has in terms of shape. Oil and up top. So Bruno goes back to his uh, hole behind, behind uh, the striker. 4 2, 3 1. So you realize that we have got all options. So that is what exactly depth does to a squad guys trust you me whichever way you look at it eric ten Hag will have no excuses all we've got to do is believe that indeed whatever he's cooking can work wonders for manchester united my name is webb this is the united out sport let me know how you would expect man united to to shape up and of course, in any squad, there are those players you think uh, who are untouchables. Probably in ours, would, it would be Kobe and Bruno, most probably. But all the rest can be substituted. We've got really options uh, everywhere. I think it's Kobe, Bruno, and Nietzsche who are untouchables. All the rest can be touched. What do you think? My name is Webb.